over $50,000 in cash went from that account into Ms. Kraszewski's pocket. It was not going to creditors. And when Anthony realized how, just how much money had already come out of that estate and asked some questions about it, We have a series of fraud handed from Ms. Kraszewski to Anthony Poza. The intent to mislead. The motive, financial gain. 52 pieces of paper Anthony Poza got from Jesse Kraszewski. Here's 17 of them. Fake. They're fake. The vet clinic administrator came in here and told you that's not correct. And not only was this created so that Ms. Kraszewski could pocket an extra $100, but the cats put down and their name got deleted from, for no reason. Fake. Fake, fake, fake. Serve pro bill, fake. <clears throat> Detective Plinus painstakingly went through these documents and showed you that they're all fraud created by someone who is very good at making fraudulent documents look correct. Mr. Poza thought, well, okay. And this is, you saw this through the handwriting expert. There's the Jeep title. Fake. Debts of decedent. Fake. These numbers don't even match the numbers that she tried to give Anthony Poza. And the will. Fake. Ms. Kraszewski knew that she had to create some reason why she had taken 50 grand out of the estate account, why she had spent another 15 plus in payments out toward other accounts. You heard testimony that there's one person involved in this case who has previously used fraud, used a mechanism to mislead for financial gain. Two different times back in 2010. You can consider those for Ms. Kraszewski's intent and motive in this case. And I submit to you that it's very clear. Her intent is to mislead. And her motive is for financial gain. Ms. Kraszewski has a pattern of making things up to get herself out of trouble. Attorney Taylor testified that when she got involved, Ms. Kraszewski got removed as the personal representative. Ms. Kraszewski's backed into a corner at that point, right? She's not in charge of this anymore. So what does she do? What does she do to try to get herself out of hot water? She files with the circuit court this new will that removes Anthony with some, Attorney Taylor told you, very odd explanation that the first will was some sort of a test that then Anthony failed. She's never heard of that in her life because it's ridiculous. And the loan, the loan alone of $18,700 meets your value criteria on count three not even considering the cash or payments that were made from the Tri-City account to the defendant's own debts. None of that inheritance loan funding is valid. That is theft. Ladies and gentlemen, you were told that personal rep representatives have a fiduciary duty to act in the best interests of the estate, not themselves. Not themselves. The estate was the rightful owner of the money at the time of this theft. And as one of the beneficiaries, 
Anthony Poza is listed as a victim on the count three. None of that $87,000 went back into this estate account. There is an intent to permanently deprive. Ms. Kraszewski didn't pay any of it back. And ultimately, Mr. Poza receives a check for thirteen grand, which was half of what's left after Ms. Kraszewski stole from it. Again, you can't read someone's mind to determine intent. But the case comes down to intent, all three charges, right? Because Ms. Kraszewski says, I didn't steal from Ms. Herndon, and I didn't kill her. But this is, again, where you're going to have to make some credibility determinations in the face of so much circumstantial evidence. Because, ladies and gentlemen, lies are very tricky to keep track of. The truth is very simple. And in this case, we've shown that Ms. Kraszewski lies when it will benefit her. When she's in hot water, she lies. Ms. Kraszewski compartmentalizes people in her life to keep them all from the truth of what's actually happening. And the intent behind this is to mislead them. And the motive is her own personal gain. Throughout this case, the question of whether Ms. Hernan was suicidal changes multiple times. On day one, on October 3rd of 2018, Ms. Kraszewski is not telling any EMS worker or deputy, oh my gosh, she's been drinking by Zine, she had a gun once, she's been trying to kill herself, I can't believe this happened. No, she's asked, point blank, was Ms. Hearn suicidal? And the answer is yes and no. But... After this date, what do we know about Ms. Kraszewski? She's very interested in what the medical examiner knows and what the sheriff's department knows because she's calling. What's in the toxicology? Do we have the toxicology back yet? Until they finally tell her, we can't talk to you anymore. So she comes in and talks to detectives. This entire discussion on Ms. Kraszewski's point is to mislead them. She's not going to reveal she poisoned Ms. Hernan with tetrahydrazoline because she doesn't know they found it yet. She doesn't know that anybody knows what she did yet. So she's not going to bring it up, just like she didn't bring it up on the day it happened. Maybe they won't find it. Then we have the star, July 9th of 2019, when Ms. Kraszewski is finally told this. Uh, I'll be honest, there's been three times that she said, I want to give up. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. And she always said, the day when it comes, I want your help. The day when it comes, I want your help. I said, I'm not helping you do anything. When it comes to pills or messing around with anything, that's, I'm not looking for trouble. I'm not trying to get in trouble. But she She's said, a like full-grown adult. I tried doctor from working. So that's a pretty different story than that. As soon as she knows the gig's up, well, okay, three times she said she wanted to give up. Ms. Kraszewski is constantly considering the new information that she's getting and altering her story in a way that benefits her. The next day, She wants to talk to law enforcement. I want you to remember that. All of these interviews are because Ms. Kraszewski thought about things overnight and wanted to give more information the next day. So the next day, the question, <clears throat> the question of was Lynn suicidal changes again. Because she was trying to find an easy way out. She was trying to, she was trying she to kill herself. She did the pills first numerous times that wasn't working. So she was trying to kill herself yeah. by drinking by Zena back then. She also bought a gun offline. When that I disposed of her before she died, too. When? How long? Oh, t two months. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that Ms. Kraszewski knew, well, they found it in the toxicology now. I have to say she was suicidal and that she drank it on her own to keep myself out of trouble. 
The intent behind all of this is to mislead. And the motive is to keep herself out of trouble. These focus over here. She bought these guns, right? Misleading the investigators. There's these guns. She bought them. I, I wrestled one away from Ms. Hernan once. Okay, well, Ms. Kraszewski is really the person, based on the evidence, that acquired those items. The Brownell firearm, here's the phone call. Hey, I want to change the delivery from a residence to a FedEx pickup. That phone call is made from Ms. Kraszewski's phone near her house. And this is all in order placed on Ms. Hernan's credit card. This one's even more telling, because what do we know about September 27th of 2018? Lynn Hernan is at Waukesha Memorial Hospital, which is nowhere near the map that you're being shown from Exhibit 173. This is a phone call to Urban Arms, another order using victim's credit card. She's in the hospital, and the order is made on Ms. Kraszewski's phone. That's all nonsense. It's all an effort to mislead. Because in reality, Ms. Kraszewski's story changes iterations based on the amount of information that she has. And the only things that never change are things that only Lynn could correct. That she was suicidal, and that she wanted to give all of her money away. I'll say again, credibility is a huge task for you in this case. And when we talk about someone's credibility, um, you've seen firsthand things that Ms. Kraszewski has no problem lying about. Dan Radloff sat up there and told you that she would pretend to go to work when he was living with her. She would get up, get ready, and pretend like she had a job. Later saying, yeah, no, I, I don't actually, I'm not actually working. Up to big lies. Like a lie to a family she lived with. Why did the Craig family think Lynn Hernan was in a coma at Freighter? This is why. Because Ms. Kraszewski told that to Scott Craig. And remember why this comes up. In May of 2018, what's going on in Ms. Kraszewski's life that makes this lie something that's going to personally gain? She's going to gain from. The scenario is that Scott wants nothing to do with her anymore. And it's all an attempt to mislead, to shift your focus. Scott, forget about that and look over here. Lynn Hernan's in a coma. She was never in a coma at Freighter Hospital, and Ms. Kraszewski never told Scott Craig that. The detectives told Scott Craig that. The motive is to get herself out of hot water. And nonetheless, she lies about telling them that. So I'd be helping her. Again, yeah, this is a guy who swears he's told me she was in a coma. No. Why I've never said that, swear to God. <laughs> why do you think he's so upset? This is someone that she was closest with. She lived with. Scott Craig was also someone in Ms. Kraszewski's life that had to stay very compartmentalized. It is no coincidence that he never met Lynn Hernan, ladies and gentlemen. It is no coincidence that Scott Craig was not invited to the funeral dinner for Lynn Hernan, where Scott may have been able to talk with an Anthony Poza or a Keith Lang or a Kareen Poza. So sad about Lynn being in a coma at Freighter. Can you imagine if Scott would have said that at the dinner? No way. This was something that was so significant because he had no idea. Ms. Kraszewski was very, very good at misleading Mr. Craig. 
and he expresses the frustration and shock in this call that you heard from State's Exhibit 54. I was told she's in the hospital. You said why in the hospital? hospital numerous times. Well, not in a coma for five months. That's what you told me. So, I know that's what I told you. Yeah, I told I you know. that to protect that's you for disgusting. a reason. I told you that to protect you for a reason. That makes no sense, ladies and gentlemen. Another consideration in your credibility determination of the defendant in this case should be this January 2019 discussion, which happens up here on our timeline. Well before the star. What is going on on this day in January of 2019? Do you recall the beginning of this discussion? Scott Craig's mad at her. She's in, she's in hot water again. Right? However, that disagreement evaporates once she says this. Tetrahydrazoline in my blood. Detective Cole couldn't even pronounce the word tetrahydrazoline. And Jesse Kraszewski is spelling it out in a text message, pretending to be at the hospital. She obviously goes on to ever deny saying this in 2019. And then changes that story to, okay, it was a friend, and then changes that story to, okay, I actually drank it, but no one was really poisoned. But the main point that you need to consider, which bears on intent, is that in Ms. Krzyzewski's own statement, she knows exactly how serious tetrahydrazoline is. And she's right about that. Because you heard testimony in this case that when used for nefarious purposes, perpetrators select tetrahydrazoline because it impairs memory impairs judgment, reduces inhibition, produces a period of unconsciousness. It's not routinely detected, and it's available. Nonetheless, six months later, when Ms. Krzyzewski is told, this is her response. I get it. Um, and there's an anomaly in her toxicology. There's a drug in her system that's not supposed to be there. What would that be? Um, it's called tetrahydrazine. What is that? A commonly known as eye drops. Hmm. This is six, six months have gone by. So now she knows. What does she say about whether Ms. Hernan was using it? A lot. Like not enough, you can't take it through your eyes. It has to be ingested through through orally. I've never seen her drink it ever, ever. And why would you drink eye drops? I mean, what would it taste like? I don't even know. But not. Oh my gosh! I've been buying bottles of this stuff for her because she drinks it all the time, and I've seen her drink it. No, it's. Yeah, because that doesn't sound right, but I didn't give her anything. I didn't even give her her pills wrong or vodka or drug. I didn't give her anything. I didn't give her this eye drop. Then we have a period of time where Ms. Kershevsky is thinking. And the next morning she says, I want to talk again. Right? This is the next day. I've gotten the visine for her. I never put any in her anything for her, ever, ever, never. I bought it for her, that's as far as I've gotten. I've never even put it in her eyes for her. I submit to you that the intent behind this is to mislead, and the motive is to get herself out of trouble. Or this would have been something she said on day one. And she was drinking vodka and visine. 
Now, how, how do you know she was drinking vodka and Visine? Because that's what she had mixed together. And that was the day before. How do you know she had mixed Visine with her, with her vodka? Because that's what she did. There's still some distance there, right? It was the day before. Again, there's a night that goes by. Ms. Karczewski is thinking. And the next morning on the 11th, I want to talk again. I've got more information. <coughs> she did she, one time, the whole time I've known her, she drank one bottle in front of me. Just one time. One bottle. And she never did that afterward. I was so upset and hurt by it because I don't, I, I didn't want her to do this. I didn't think it was the best way to go. She was trying everything. Two days ago, this person is saying, I've never seen her drink it, ever, ever. And now she's drinking a whole bottle of it in front of her. This is the same day. The water didn't taste like anything in the vodka. She liked it because she got like a little more of a buzz off of it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not one doctor or expert told you that that is factual at all. Dr. Thomas testified that she is unaware of anything that would suggest people are drinking tetrahydrazoline because of some euphoric or buzz. Dr. Bedritsky said the same thing. Even Dr. Spiller said that's not a symptom or side effect of drinking tetrahydrazoline. Again, the intent is to mislead. Knowing she wants it. Once I put in two drops for her. Okay. Once. In what? In her vodka. Okay. And how, once was how long before that? That was uh, a month and a No. Probably four weeks. Three, four weeks before. That was the only time I ever did it. Ladies and gentlemen, when you determine credibility, you have to consider whether the source of the information has an interest in the outcome. This is the last version that you're left with. Oh. That bottle of water right there had in six, six vices. How, you know? How do you know that? Because that's what she put in it. When? She told me. The three days before I threw it out. And she asked for it that morning. Did you gave it to her. Gave it to her. Yeah. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, can you even rely on that? Credibility is again questioned as we begin this wild goose chase. On July 12th, there's the first little piece of information about things that are hidden away. And before you even dive into this, I want you just to think, why in the world would someone hide these types of items? Nonetheless, it starts with the BMO lockbox. Give me out. Okay. That's what I'd like. Okay. Check her BMO Harris. Her BMO, BMO Harris bank. Okay. She has a lockbox. I thought you said this was a storage shed. That's where she put her items. No. And this is a BMO Harris lockbox now. Correct. I didn't give any specifics for a reason. You said a storage shed. I said it's not in my name. So in a lockbox, there box. is a, a gun. No. There is, where's the gun? I said she has her stuff and I have my stuff. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on July 12th, when Ms. Kershewski tells Aaron Hoppy to look in that BMO lockbox, she absolutely knows it's empty because she was the last one there with her mom the day after Lynn Hernan died. And in April of 2019, before these interviews, she surrenders that box, signing that there's nothing in it. Shift the focus. Look at things that don't matter.
she has a new layer to this whole story then. Tell us where you bury this stuff. No, I'll tell you. Where'd you bury it? <laughs> it's in Whitnell Park. Whitnell Park? That's where my bunny used to be buried. It's behind my mom's apartment. Again, why, instead of, so in theory there, instead of telling anyone what happened, I'm going to keep it quiet and I'm going to save some of this stuff in case Lynn Hernan does die and then after she's died and, and I've lied about how she died, I'll have it buried. You, you can't even connect it in a, in a logical way if you try. Okay does get muddy and swampy certain times of the year. It wasn't when I went. Um, I did this literally before she even passed. So, and it was all together in three Ziploc bags. Or is it in a box or anything? Nope. Or it's just three, three Ziploc three bags. Ziploc I just bags. kept Ziploc baking it and then the freezer bags. And how far down? I would say about four to five feet. Four to five feet? Yep. Are you, are you kidding me? Maybe four? I don't know. I guess... Four feet? Hold on. <laughs> I understand you. It's just over four feet. Okay, like this. What is this? I'm not going to Okay, that meant me too. Okay, hold on. Yeah, you're right. stop? If you give me more of my body in there or something. I'm one of those people sometimes, like, I'm better, like, I have the road. Like, I can tell you roads, but I can show you. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm fine with that. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Kraszewski is not stupid. She knows the difference between five feet and 18 inches. But Detective Happy wasn't buying it, so the story changes. Law enforcement attempts to find these things every time she says they exist. Metal detectors and detectives out in parks looking for rocks over, over burial sites. Her initial claim of a storage shed somewhere comes up again on the 16th. The storage shed, Justin. I know there's a storage shed. There isn't, I swear to God, there's not a storage shed. I, I put down everything. I just said that because I thought basically in that that would help me get out. I swear to you on everything. She thought it'd help her get out of trouble. That's why she said that. Ladies and gentlemen, the reality of Jesse Krzyzewski looks a lot different than this person in Exhibit 206 crying about a lost burial site. The reality of this person, her acts, words, and statements, is that she is accessing documents about criminal poisoning in July of 2018 and deleting them in February of 2018. Sorry, 2019. Household poisons. Arsenic trioxide. Ladies and gentlemen, what else do we know happened right around February of 2019 in this case? <clears throat> right in here. The medical examiner wouldn't talk to her anymore. The reality of this case, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is someone with a fair amount of poison research on her own phone. This is someone who has profited over $144,000 before death and over $80,000 after. This is someone who misleads others when she's in hot water. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that Ms. Krzyzewski thought she would get away with this or be able to talk her way out of it. But the reality of this is that the cause of death is a poisoning, and the manner of death is a homicide. At the time Lynn Hernan died, she was worth more to Ms. Krzyzewski dead than alive. And this person that you heard about, this loving person on the left, did not kill herself. Based on all the facts and evidence that you've seen, 
The state is going to ask that you return three verdicts of guilty in this case. Thank you.